Hello, hello everyone. Welcome in. We are doing some Don't Sweat the Lego Technique here on Back to Brick. I am John with Back to Brick. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Truly hope that you all are um, subscribed, downloading, and listening to the podcast where Garrett chats to brilliant builders all around the planet. Hello, Rick Brickham. Welcome in, sir. Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Good day. Yeah, I pulled out the Aussie. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> Anyone who was in, who was in here for the for the two two starts with Brent Waller earlier knows that it was a little bit of an early morning for me. So uh, pardon me if I'm a little punchy today. But if you didn't see the uh, interview with Brent Waller of Waller Customs, aka the guy who um, built the original Ecto-1 for Lego, aka the guy who brought you the Seinfeld set, aka the concept designer for um, the Lego Batman movie. Uh, yeah, that guy. We chatted with him this morning. Uh, it was fun. We had a lot of fun. Uh, he has some really amazing uh, mocks. He has some really amazing instructions. He's got the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man up for right now. 800 pieces. It's awesome. What's up, Emily? How you doing? Um, yeah, so that was really fun. Please check it out. Brent was great. We chatted for almost an hour and a half. It was a lot of fun. I got time zones mixed up again because uh, that's kind of my thing. It's what I do. Um, so it's my calling card. You know, whatever. Um, Barry Bonds has his HGH. I got mixing up time zones. I don't know why I thought of Barry Bonds. <laughs> Maybe it's the Hall of Fame. Anyways, thank you so much again for tuning into Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. This is the beginning of the fourth and final week. We have hit the home stretch. Um, we are, uh, I, I was looking through it today. I was posting up some stuff and filtering through some stuff. And I noticed that it is over 40 episodes. What's up, Eric? What's up, Brand the Builder? Uh, it is at over 40 episodes now. Of, uh, of Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. And I cannot tell you how honored I am to be a part of it, um, to to be able to do this on a daily when we do it now, because uh, we have season one, or series one, now we got series two, series three, series four, coming forward. Um, and it's just been a true uh, honor to be a part of this, not only to get to chat with some of the most amazing, um, in my mind, my humble opinion, mind, some of the most amazing minds, uh, creators, and builders uh, in, in Lego, um, and good humans to boot. Uh, that's, uh, that's always where we want to start, uh, the good human aspect, and that's kind of where we are. Um, I'm real happy with all of these folks. They've put together amazing things, and now we have over 40 episodes to show uh, for it, and it's all free. It's all available here on our Back to Brick page. Um, it's all available if you just go to the little, oh, actually here, <laughs> I'm on our page. If you go to the little triangle right here, look, I got my ring light, Emily. Um, it's already got a blowout. You can see how it's got a blowout right there. It's dim right there. See that? Um, and you go right there and you see series, boom, don't sweat the Lego technique. There they all are. All 40 some odd of them. They're all there. What's up, Martin? Thanks for popping in. Hey, we're just getting started. Uh, I started a little early because I was trying to get some of the, uh, some of my yammering out of the way. Uh, hey, happy Sunday to you, Eric. Hello, Brett. Hello. Everyone's popping in now. See, this is what happens. I, this, I get, I get all the other, the junk out of the way. My stuff, you know, my branding, all that stuff. Figure I need to learn some digital. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> this this could be an interesting chat today. Uh, so <laughs> so we do have Rick Brick a bit here today, and I imagine that we're going to be doing some uh, some new. Uh, or I'm looking. I'm opening up a new new file here on my studio as we speak. Um, we're going to go over some digital builds. So Martin's in the right place, I believe, and I think he's got a bunch of other stuff up his sleeve. We got some Q and A's going forward. So yeah, this is the beginning of the fourth week uh, of uh, series two. Don't sweat the Lego technique. Um, Rick will kick us off and we'll continue on down the path, assuming all scheduling going forward, right? We'll see. <laughs> Life is going to happen one way or the other, and we're going to continue on one way or the other. And uh, I'm just super stoked. I, I can't tell you how, how, how overjoyed I have been um, with this series, with series one. Uh, there hasn't been an episode where I haven't walked away and been like, man, I learned something. <laughs> like I, I haven't been able to say I, I didn't learn anything that episode. 
So I am super thankful uh, to be able to sit here and, and pick the brains of these folks um, rather than doing it on d direct message. <laughs> now we're doing it on live stream. So here we are. Uh, and yeah, we're going to continue on. It's a fourth episode with um, Mr. Rick Brickham. I, we went over the APC uh, last week, uh, we've got we we did we did a little bit of digital, a little bit of physical stuff. Uh, the digital stuff is really cool, and then to be able to see the tactile um, uh, arrangement of it uh, to go to from the digital to the tactile, it's really cool. Uh, and I'm I'm learning a little bit of this myself um, in the in the digital realm, the instructions. Um, and uh, some more of the stuff. Actually, I think instructions is where we're going to learn with Matthias this week. So we'll see. Um, and I, I know Rick is a big fan of doing instructions. So maybe we could chat about that a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm building from instructions within studio. And it's difficult. Uh, but I've realized that I've taken... Um, uh, nuggets from just every single one of these episodes where we've talked about digital things and I'm like, oh, Rick said that or up oh, Matias said that or up. Oh, oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Billy didn't say that. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Billy's episodes have been so great. I, and the feedback actually on Billy's episodes have been the most fun uh, because they're, they're most polarizing. Um, and it's also, I think it's mind expanding. I think people have opened up more than they've closed up, which is great. I think that's encouraging. Um, I know it's encouraging for me going forward. I don't need that, uh, that, that, that okay, because <laughs> it's going to do it one way or the other. But, um, the, the encouragement, uh, once again, I, I get the negative and, and the positive, uh, and, and the in between, but I've, uh, being able to blend them and even chat, chat with a couple people to kind of get past the negativity and maybe have a little bit more of an open mind uh, is kind of really uh, been rewarding the last couple of days considering things that have been happening. So <laughs> um, anyone who's kept up. But that being said, I want to chat with Rick a little bit more about studio, a little bit more. Hello, Catherine. How you doing? A little bit more about his builds and, and see what he's got going on. Uh, also, I want to see how much he loves instructions. So let's see what we got going on here. Rick, you ready? There he is. Boom. Hopefully we don't have technical difficulties again today. I know I'm having technical difficulties with my ring light. Are you there? You're there. I see you. Good evening, sir. Is this the first time out of four? Could be. Well, maybe maybe the first two. The first time was fine. Okay. The second two were a bit, yeah. Oh, thanks, Austin. This is from Oregon Post Clothing Company. They're right down the street. They're awesome. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, because I feel like every time we try that, it's just, the, well, of course, our first time ever was me having an epic failure of trying to uh, start up on a laptop, which now I know is not the way you do things. So, all right. <laughs> and for all of you that are unfamiliar, for all of you that missed maybe the first episode or the first couple episodes, Rick is the gentleman who ruined Instagram for all of you. <laughs> Um, by inviting me on to a live stream for my first time ever. So here we are. Oops. <laughs> and now I'm doing it all the time. I, I get loads of sleep. Uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, hey, have Brandon. a good night. <laughs> so how's it going, buddy? It's going well. Yep, it's going pretty good. We've had yeah. a, a, a busy weekend. I'm tired, but uh, good I'm, busy? Ready to get, I'm ready to get going. Good busy? Yeah, up and down. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> we've got, we, we're dealing with, um, you know, we live in the coast. So we've got different seasons throughout, every different seasons within the week. Um, right. Tourism season also. What's up, Evan? And uh, man, this week was, it seemed like uh, everyone was on vacation again for some reason. And uh, our town got swarmed uh, by a bunch of, our little town of 600 got engulfed by a bunch of people. So yeah. it was... <laughs> It was, it was unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But. So, uh, so I had a bit of a highlight last night. I was able to do a live stream with my buddy, Brett Hooper, who happens to be in the chat and yeah. just mentioned that I've got a new set behind me that's purple and that is Bear Paws. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> it's food. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bear Paws? Wait, bear is that human paws. food? It is human food. It, they're like, um, they're like, a. Uh, like a soft cookie. Oh, I see. I'm thinking bear claws. Hey, Brett. <laughs> I'm thinking bear claws. So, oh, but, yeah. There's bear claws, too. Right. These are called bear paws. Bear, bear claws makes me think of Tommy Boy, where he's like, I used to eat two of them at the same time when I was younger. <laughs> I used to get lodged in this. I way, love Tommy right Boy. Here. That's fantastic. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, I had, a, had a good time last night with that. Um, and the rest was the rest was family based, but uh, I'm excited to d to talk tonight because I I'm gonna I'm gonna do three. We're gonna go over three things, and then we can do that Q and A that you're talking about. So the first thing I want to take you through is how to customize a part. Whoa! What? I love it. <coughs> What's up, Rowan? <clears throat> and by that I mean like add a sticker to the part, I... right? So. <laughs> That's customizing. <laughs> I, I hear customize out of out of. You're thinking script, like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I do I have to go get my set? <laughs> I got my <laughs> kit over here. <laughs> so I'm going to take you through that process quickly. Go, and then I'll also take you through, hey, Lewis. I'll also take you through um, the rendering process. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I'll show you my post-rendering um, editing to show you oh. how I come together with my final images. And then the final thing I'll show you is just uh, a really quick thing about Lego ideas and how I got my idea out there and how everybody else can get theirs out there. So why don't we get Fantastic. started? Let's do it. I'm ready. Right. What's up, Kate? Everyone's popping in today. I love it. Cool. Okay, Thanks, so everyone. for tonight, I set up the screen from a distance. So hopefully you can see this. Can you see that? Sure can. Okay. So hey, Lewis. the first thing I'll show everybody is I want to I want you to have a good view of both the upper toolbars yep. and the build. So okay. in order to do that, I can do a couple things. I can squeeze this menu bar to the left, but it only goes so far, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to uh, Edit, Preferences. And just over here, you can actually go to Appearance, and you can flip your screen to Horizontal. Okay. And by doing that, you'll watch the, the menu bar will pop down to the bottom. Cool. Oh my Lord. I'm so doing that right now. Awesome. So that gives you like, you know, complete horizontal freedom. Now, as you can see, the screen is completely open. And if you really want to, you can actually push this menu all the way down so that it's not even visible. Like, right, right. You know, yeah. Right <laughs> down. <laughs> the other day I had to, I don't know if anyone else has that. See, Brett, Brett just, okay. I'm not the only one that's learned. <laughs> um, Brett just learned this too. See, I did something the other day because I had the trackpad and I, I don't know if I swept my finger across, but I lost the entire grid. Like I lost my whole build surface and oh, it was no. all yeah. menu. And, and if you've ever tried to use those arrows that try to move the little line over with a trackpad, it just doesn't work. Oh, uh, right. So I had to actually close out a, a save, of course, save everyone. Close. Oh, yeah. Save, save, save. And then reopen, and finally I got back the screen that you now see. Um, yeah, it, I was so I thought I lost a lot of work. So that sucks. Um, yeah. The good thing, the good thing about what what I just did is now we can get a good view of the build. Now this is this is a micro model I made of my favorite of all time set, the Cosmic Fleet Voyager. So again, uh, I want this to be the center of attention, so I'm going to hit set as origin. Okay. And that means that when I rotate now, it will rotate around this object. Now, a couple things. This right here, these two sloped pieces right here. It's hard for me to show my cursor, but basically, can you see it going around? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. These two sloped pieces right here are stickers that I custom made. Okay. So the piece itself is a, a large um, two by eight slope that... Uh, it's just a big piece, but they don't come with an, with a sticker option. So I had to custom make the sticker. It's a slope. It's a yeah. I'll try and break it out just a second. Okay. Uh, I get, I just keep I'm like how I'm trying trying to visualize it. Edit. Oops. I can't even open my coffee with my right arm. That's how dead this thing is now. Uh oh. <laughs> so this is the piece right here. Can you see this? Oh okay 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 yeah yeah. Oops. Can you see that? Yep. Makes it. Oh, I love that piece too. Actually. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, so once you're ready to edit, or once you're ready to render, rather, uh, I'm going to set this as origin again. I'm actually going to exit because I don't want to make any changes. You want to find your, your angle. So just, you know, you're going to rotate this around until you get the right angle that you want, right? Mm -hmm. Once you're happy with the view that you want to render, and you can pick any view, you can go up to the... <coughs> the menu which is actually now down here because i'm not used to it being up uh down here i used i, I work with my menu side by side mm -hmm. 
but you can pick predefined. I'll actually just switch back for just a second because it seems to have gone bye bye. Uh, preferences, appearance, back to vertical, please. So up here, there's a camera. Can you see the little camera right there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, click, that. I... <laughs> click, click on that. Now, I think that might show up if I go back to horizontal, but basically, it's got predetermined view view types. So you can do side, side view. Mm -hmm. You can do bottom view, which is just going to show the underside of the build, which is boring, obviously. Mm -hmm. Top view, which is pretty cool. That's a quick way to get completely bang on angular views. So 90 degree, 180 degree, top, top down, perfect, right? Or you can freehand it by just holding down the right mouse key or mouse button rather, and just rotating until you get the angle you want. So once we're down to what we want to, what we want to show on the render, we just go to render. So that's right up here. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take you to the render screen. So just give it a second. So this is what the render screen looked like. Those who are familiar with uh, Studio will, will know this. Those who are not will learn something. So there's a number of options in the render screen that you can do to make your mock look great. First of all, you've got three different levels of rendering uh, quality, medium, high, and very high. And then custom. Custom's where you can, somewhere in between. I've never used custom, I just, I usually use medium. And the mm -hmm. reason I use medium is because it produces a very good render, mm -hmm. but at a lo much lower file size so that you can minimize how much, the, has, how much space it takes up on your computer, right? So all of the, all of the, the, the mocks that you've done through Studio thus far that you've, we've seen, those are all medium? You got it. Wow. Okay. <coughs> wow. Wow. The, the detail you get out of that is unreal. It's a, well, I'll show you how I get to where I get in a minute, but... Mm -hmm. um, that's my default setting. Uh, and then on top of that, it also cuts down on the rendering time. And that's, that's a big thing for me because I really don't want to leave my computer, walk away for eight hours while it renders one scene. I want to get a lot of them rendered quickly and then get them out to social so everybody can see them. So mm -hmm. again, what, once you're in the rendering sc screen, you can still reposition your mock by using the mouse wheel button or your, or your left mouse button to sort of scroll around and you can also re-rotate with your right mouse button so you can still make final adjustments in here and this screen right here can be sized to any any size you want so you can i've got it at 1080 by 1080 because i mm -hmm. post most of my things to instagram so it works perfectly square right mm -hmm. but you can do any resolution size like 1280 by 720 so any any ratio four to three 16 to nine that sort of deal mm -hmm. so once you've got your model position properly in the screen and you've got your quality set you can also make other adjustments like um, the lighting style right now there's two options here building and mechanic mm -hmm. too difficult to go into what those two do but basically they change the way the light works on the object and they change the final rendering appearance mm -hmm. you can also change where the light is by going to left front right front left rear right rear mm -hmm. i haven't noticed a huge difference with these adjustments but sometimes depending on where your model is you can get the light shining in a different direction right um sent intensity so intensity is what you're going to use i use one almost all the time because i'm rendering everything as if it was out in the daylight but if you wanted to render something with a with a, a light brick on hey open bill repeat uh you can get you can get light, light bricks to light up when you render at like one percent or point one rather so you just mm -hmm drag this down to point one and you get yourself a dark a dark render which will make the light brick light up right right so hey, for tom. Today, yeah hey tom today we're just gonna i watched uh, tom and kate yesterday during the uh ch their challenge their uh, build the nines challenge it was fantastic oh i popped in and out i had it was a rough it's day. awesome so i'm gonna i'm just gonna leave it at one and we're gonna render this image just as we see it right there Okay, so this is what we're going to render. You're just going to hit render right there in the bottom right hand corner. This is probably not visible to people because of the question mark, but I'll just get a bit closer. It's right down here. Okay. It's very um, user friendly, I find. So I'm going to hit render. Next thing it's going to do is it's going to open up a standard explorer window and you can just decide where you want it to go. So in this case, I'm going to leave it to where it's going because this is actually the root folder where the, where the mock comes from. 
and I'm going to call it back to brick to render. That's us. And it's rendering as a PNG. <clears throat> and you're going to hit save. So next thing is going to pop up is the load window. You can see there are 6,364 uh, parts in the entire file that we're working on. Now over here on this screen, I'm going to drag it over. The next window you'll see is this, which is basically just it computing. <clears throat> and, and then the final window you're going to see is this window, which starts off black, but as it starts to render, you'll see little squares appear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's showing us in the top right hand corner that this render is going to take thir approximately 13 minutes. That seems like a quick one. <laughs> exactly. If I was to render this at high quality, you could probably double that. Yeah. And if I went to very high, you could probably quadruple that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's heavy on time when you, when you go on the, in the high quality. So we're going to let this continue in the background. And I'm going to show you now part designer. So we talked oh, about I last week. I just learned about part designer. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned this last week on Sunday. Yeah. I know. I just learned oh, about it. I've yeah. been touring around about it. It's great. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so Part Designer is cool. I've used it to make stickers for my mocks, um, both ones that I've created and printed and other ones that are still in the in the works, but I just didn't, haven't gone further with them. Right. So right. when you open up Part Designer. This, that's what you get all of, your, all of your APC stickers on, right? That's correct. Right, right. So I've actually got those open right here. So Let these me, are... These are all of my APC stickers. That's so great. Lewis says his renders take half a day to finish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> it's amazing because his mocks are massive. I uh, yeah, they are insanely large. So yeah. but they're beautiful. No, I can't. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so so where I built I made all of these in AutoCAD, as you know. Yes. And these are just basically stickers that, that I then will put onto a part. So which, which could I ask a question real quick? Absolutely. Forward, sorry, question. Uh, hand up. No so by the way, if anyone has hand up question, I put it in earlier. Uh, there's a question bubble in there, you hit the button, and out pops uh, a little extra thing. And there's a little question bubble, throw them in there, please, because then we miss we'll miss them when people are popping in here. And I don't want to keep scrolling through because I, I, I miss the screen. too. So I'm being selfish. Um, but um, GIMP, is that that's like Photoshop, not the same as an AutoCAD? Correct. Photoshop, yeah. Photoshop is a completely different program, which we are going to use tonight. I'm going to show right. you what I do in that tonight. But my question then is, so I, I found out that there's GIMP, a, a free version of, 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 of Photoshop, via, like similar, what, whatever, uh, file or software or whatever. Like, okay. I'm so dumb when it comes to computers. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, whatever. Gives the software that does photo stuff. Right. Is there, is there an AutoCAD, like a free version, a freeware version of not, that? Not, not that I know of, no. Okay. You might be able to try it for 30 days and not pay anything. Right. But uh, in my experience, there's only two levels of AutoCAD available. Light which is $536 Canadian, so probably $450 oh, American. Yeah. Okay, I did yeah. ask you this. And then uh, the regular is 20, 2300 a year. So That's right. You, we, we talked about this last time. Cause I, I, I don't know if I asked you if there was a free one, but we did go over the pricing. I know that much. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. AutoCAD's not like a – they don't like to give stuff away for free. <laughs> Yeah, I get it, but man, yeah, we're you know, spending you know so how much on Lego. I don't want to say. It. I know. Well, I, know. <laughs> well, I happen to I happen to have a copy from years ago, so I'm using an old copy. So, once you're in Part Designer, again, Part Designer is part of Studio. When you're in Studio, I'll open up Studio for a second here. If Lewis swears by GIMP, then it's got to be good. If you ask me. Uh, so if you're if you're in Studio and you want to use Part Designer, go up to Tools. Yeah. And just hit part designer. And if you don't have the program, it will probably automatically start a, d a download. It, you, it, so you can pop right out. You can pop right. You can just hit it and it'll pop it open. I don't have to minimize oh, things and go to the button. Yeah, that's right. You should be able to do it that way. I, I have it as a separate icon on my, on my taskbar, so I opened it up separately. Anyway, so when you're in parts designer, you can do three things. You can work on a minifig. You can work with 
pre-made parts by Lego, or you can build your own. So we're going to do start from scratch. So you click on start from scratch. On the right hand side, or on the left hand side rather, we have brick. Uh, we have a brick selector, so we're going to just hit brick, mm -hmm. and you can just drag a brick in. But let's say you didn't want to do a brick, right? Go up to. I'm going to take the camera up. Go up to shape. Oh, now just a second here. Where is my? Oh, here it is. Element. Oh, why is it not letting me? <laughs> uh oh. Oh, oh, I know. I think I know what it is. Let's go new. Oh, choose a type to decorate. Oh, sorry. You have to hit parts. I'm sorry. You have to hit parts. Yeah, that's what I was just going through myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just realized that myself. The other one, the start from scratch is if you want to make your own part, which I do right. not want to do. I just want to put a sticker on a part. So right. in this window, in the center window, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to select from a drop down list of different parts. And it's for, it's for subcategories like brick, tile, slope, and then tile again, but it's round. <clears throat> so for those let's, wondering. let's say we... I'm doing it too. Just so everyone wondered, I'm just, I'm not, I feel badly that I'm not looking on the screen, but I'm following along with you. Awesome. So let's say we wanted to put, put a sticker on a tile. So we're going to hit tile and we're going to add to the viewport. There is no customized part. Do you still want to proceed? Yes. So there we go. We've got, we've got a little tile. Right. This is just a tiny little one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now to add an image, we go up to edit. Uh, sorry, insert. Yep. Insert image. That's going to open up a window, like a windows window. Sure, sure. And now you're just going to go to wherever you have your um, stickers. So I'm going to go back into the Aliens APC stickers, and then you're going to see all of my stickers here. Right. Okay. Now this tile that we've got is square. So I'm going to I'm going to choose this square sticker. Now, by the way, these are are PNGs, but you can make them JPEGs as well. Mm -hmm. If you go to this list right here, you'll see it says all files, so you can choose any type of file. Well, I'm going to choose this one. So we're just going to double click it. <clears throat> and look, it now it's in the space. Oh, that's what? Okay, hold on a second. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So now when you when you when you put it in the space, you drag it and it will automatically snap as you can see some red lines appear and it snaps to the center of the tile. Right. Now once you're happy with the placement, you're going to hit this you're going to hit this okay button. Yeah, yeah. Check this check mark. Well, we're not happy yet because obviously the sticker is like 18, eight times <laughs> the size of the tile, right? So right, to right. fix that, you just grab these little grip points and just drag it yeah. till it's where you want it to be. And now we're going to go up to the top right corner here and drag that down to here. Perfect. And now if I zoom in, that sticker mm -hmm. is sized perfectly for this oh, little one by one tile. That's so great. Now this we're now we're happy. Cool. We click the sticker again and we click oh. the check mark. And boom, that oh, is wow. a stickered part. That's so awesome. Okay? It that is that simple. I mean, I've gone it I made the entire sticker that you see here in AutoCAD. I drew all these circles, I colored them in, mm -hmm. everything. I mimicked an actual Lego sticker in right. So I made all this. So that's the that's the hard work. This is the easy part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to figure out what a, what a freeware version of AutoCAD is. That right, oh, yeah. Kind of okay, stuff. so I'm going to just move part designer out of the way for a second. Come mm -hmm. back into studio. I'm going to go up to this menu right up here. Oh, where did it go? Oh, the render's done already. <laughs> Holy cow. See how quickly that goes? Oh, that turned out really nicely, too. Now, this is on, as I, as I mentioned, medium quality and regular lighting. Nothing special yet. Wow. But it looks good. You can see that it does an excellent job of mirrored, like image mirroring. So it's got like yeah. reflection off the bricks reflection. and stuff. Yeah. It's very crisp. Very nice. Yeah. It'll get even better once I get editing that. So that's what that looks like. So we'll just close that for now. Back to studio. Up here. Right now we're looking at the master part list. This is essentially what Lego offers. But we want to see our custom parts. So we click... Drop down, we go to custom parts. 
Sometimes it takes a second to load, but what I'll do is I'll just scan through these. You can see here, we've got the Cosmic Fleet Voyager and then the mm -hmm. year. So that's the sticker that's on this set right, right. there. Right? right. And as I roll, scroll down the list, you'll start to see APC stickers, some one by two tiles, all this True. business, right? But what we don't see is we don't see that one by one <laughs> part that I just made, right? <laughs> Time flies when we're having fun. Exactly right. <laughs> hey, Carter, what's up? <clears throat> so Man, what we want to do is we want to get, we want to get this part into studio. Yeah. Now that we're done editing this part, we mm -hmm. go up to the top, export to studio. Uh, Just hit export to studio. It's going to ask you to give it a name. You can ca call it whatever you want. I'm going to leave it as tile one by one. Actually, maybe I'll just go add something into the end like aliens right. okay man you can also do all sorts of other stuff selected parts only if you're if you've selected a group of parts on the screen great mm -hmm. i only have one part mm -hmm. so i'm just going to hit export right on now we're going to go back to studio it, the the process is pretty much instantaneous so we're back in studio now and lo and behold right at the top <laughs> so they talk to each other that quickly Correct. Wow. wow. That's now amazing. it comes in. I happen to have black selected, but mm -hmm. you can make this tile any color. That's so sweet. Yeah. Now I want to put it on the model. So let's just open up the model here. So I'll go to sub model view edit. Now I'm in the model and let's say I want to put it like right here. Mm -hmm. You just go back over to the selector. You just drag it in like a regular tile and drop her down. Great. That's so awesome. And you're done. So now yeah. we've got aliens going on inside the uh, Cosmic Fleet Voyager. Yeah, that's so great. That's awesome. So that's how you use Part Designer to make a part, export it to Studio. It shows up in the custom parts list, mm -hmm. and you can drop it and dra drag it and drop it into your model just like any other part. Wow. So cool. Okay. Hey, PNW Lego, what's up? So we just I'm went over. I'm assuming you're in my neck <coughs> of the woods. I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> so we just went over how to um, render. One second, John. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. We're good. Sorry. By the way, this is Rick Brickham. Follow him. He's a good builder. Hi, guys. <laughs> so we just went over how to render, and we've got the render now on the screen. So here's the rough render. This is... Yeah. Straight out of the gate, studio at its best for a. Uh, actually, I'm not sure where he is, but maybe he is. Um, BNW, I'm in Oregon, northern yeah. coast. So the next thing we the next thing we want to do, John, is we want to make this look better because right now it looks okay. It really does. In fact, it looks a lot better on the screen on your phone than it does on my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you that because I'm able to see both, but. Right. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is the first thing you want to do is find out, find where it is. So again, you're going to go to your, your, oops. You're going to go to your file locations. Uh, we put this in iconic Lego sets micro. And mm. there it is right there. Yeah. So awesome. Back to brick to render. Now. Yeah. We're going to open up, we're going to open up Photoshop. So let me just get this open here. Awesome. By the way, you guys are all tuned into Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. This is series two, start of week four, episode four, all those numbers with Rick Brickham here. I am John with Back to Brick, aka Blockhead23 and PNW Lego. I hope you are going to the PDX minifigure exchange. They are awesome. Nice. Okay, I opened up Photoshop, so I'm going to drag it over. Just one second here. It takes a second to open when, the first time, but once sure. you've got it open, you can drag and drop images into Photoshop real quick. Uh -huh. All right, so here it is. <coughs> so, Studio, because I rendered it at medium quality, mm -hmm. I want to sharpen the image up. Now, I do... I use extremely basic functions in Photoshop to make things look better. I am not a Photoshop pro. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to show you today is layman's way of using Photoshop to make things look good. 
All righty. So I'm, at the, top, I'm the prime layman. At the top, we've got filter. <clears throat> filter, the only thing I've ever really worked with, you see you got blur, noise, sharpen. Sharpen's mm -hmm. what I work with. I just hit yeah. sharpen once and it sharpens the image. Now, if you want to do it again, go back up to filter. It'll be the first thing on the list and mm -hmm. you can repeat it. Now watch what happens. Heart was kind of hard to make out, but it sharpened it twice. I, I saw, yeah, no, I saw some movement. Um, okay. Now for me, using the sharpen tool, I mean, not to say that using anything else is che cheating or whatever, but for sharpen, it just seems like you're just enhancing what is already there. Is that, is that kind of what you're already, is it's, that like, it's artificially, artificially sharpening edges to make it more crisp. Okay. Okay. If I was to go too far, I'll take it, I'll go a couple more times and you'll see what starts to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, boy. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. That's because, <laughs> that's because it's artificial. So right. I'm going to go up to, I'm gonna go up to edit, undo mm -hmm. sharpen, and then step backward again. And we're back to, and if we want to undo everything, step backward just keep stepping backward until there's mo no more step backwards right have you tried blur song too <laughs> oh andrew oh did somebody who was that say uh, <laughs> i was wondering if someone i that was <laughs> i like that song it's good literally the first thing that came to my mind when you said blur <laughs> <laughs> yeah no Okay, so I'm let's so sharpen. Let, let's go back to sharpen again. Let's go sharpen. Woo! So Sorry. typically, typically I sharpen twice, and I find sharpening twice does it. The next thing I want to do is you can see it's hard to see in this in the camera here, but oh. for me it's a little dull. The colors are dull. Yeah. So I want to I want to spruce them up. So you go up to image adjustments, brightness brightness and contrast first. Mm -hmm. Let me drag that over. Brandon, or I'm sorry, Eric, I see your comment. And Brandon, I see yours as well. That's funny. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be adjusting <laughs> brightness and contrast. I'm going to put it back on the model so you can actually see what happens as I do this. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is I'll adjust the brightness. Dump it. See what's happening there? Yeah, that looks cool. Really? It's I've seen some that are just way too saturated. I've seen so like some builds that have been sent out. Just, <coughs> it's a little saturated. Exactly. It's a, it's yeah. a very, very, um, you have to be careful with this. What right, does that right. person say? The undo button is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, exactly. and, and Eric, hey, points Ben, out, how Eric, you doing, buddy? Eric, uh, uh, scruffy, uh, brick herder. Hey, hey, Ben, how's it going? Um, says if you're just using your iPhone, you can edit and, uh, and increase definition, which will do some nice things as well. You can. I, I, I have noticed that on, I haven't noticed. So what you can do that. Oh, through, through Photoshop. No, just using your iPhone, the standard built in. I'm doing this on Photoshop, <laughs> but if you're using only an iPhone, he's right. You oh, can in the just actual edit of the, uh, the camera that photo just no in the, like if you click on a photo and you click edit, you have a right. whole host of adjustments, just like right. this. In fact, it's, it's very comparable. And I use that to edit all of the images I'm posting on a daily sure. basis now on Instagram. Sure. Yeah, I use Camera Plus. I do it all on my phone. So, okay, so you'll see I'm, I'm increasing the, the brightness. Now, the, the brightness is just going to make things, like, really bright. But the key is to do both. So let's say I want to take the brightness. I'm just picking 30 here. And then I'm going to pull up the, the contrast. Watch what happens. Oh, uh, yeah. See how it kind of gets a lot more defined and mm -hmm. kind of yeah. sexy looking? <laughs> So we I just I said usually, sexy with talking about Lego. I did. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at there at 40. And then I'm going to click OK. So I'm, I've made my adjustments, 30 and 40. Again, I have absolutely no education in this whatsoever. This is all learned <laughs> on the fly. But I did stay at the Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> I did. Mm, sexy brick. I'm going to go back up to image. And now under adjustments, I'm going to hit hue and saturation now what this is going to let you do is you've made some adjustments to the to the brightness and, and um contrast now i want to give it i want to give it a little more fill so saturation is going to allow me to do that now i could go really crazy and look what happens saturation you can make it black and white or Whoa. you can pull it right 
right to the other end and it gets all like mm. psychedelic. Yeah, I like the funky uh like that's um Ken T C and the um and the Mary Pranksters version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so again, it's all about finesse. I'm gonna go to thirties looking pretty good to me right there. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I think we're done with this one. So I'm going to save this image to show you the difference between this one and the one that we started with. Awesome. And I'm hoping Ooh. that this will be like noticeable on uh, the computer or on the phone rather, because it is noticeable on my computer. Oh yeah. How often um, do you zoom out and you find that there are just kind of parts floating in your build somewhere? Um, not too often. Occasionally I will accidentally hit a key and, and I, like if I go to edit a, um, an object, let's say it's a block and the, yeah. the box around the block is like way out to nowhere. I'll know there's a piece somewhere floating around. Right. Yeah. So that I, is <laughs> I think it's because of my trackpad too. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> so I'm going to make, I'm like, I don't remember building that out there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a little suggestion here, John. For anybody yeah. out there that's looking to get into digital digital design like this and they're looking to render and stuff, if you make some renders and you make adjustments to your render and you're not and you and you don't want to sacrifice the original render, when you save the file, just name it something different. I usually name mine adjusted. Yeah. And that way if I don't like the adjustment, I can go back and tweak it with the original rather than having to tweak the adjusted one because it can be a real pain. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing that I shouldn't say the one thing, but a major thing that I've learned in um, in this pr program is the file, like the saving, save as save. That's just you gotta. It's like going back to Windows ninety five. You know, like save, 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 save. Exactly. Okay, it's saved. So speaking, now, speaking of which, let's open. Yeah, let's open both and see what they look like. So, even just on this screen, you can see the difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what we started with. This is what we got. Wow, Crazy, amazing. eh? Yeah. Now, does it? It does it? Does it read as a different file size when you when you just hover your uh, mouse Let's over? Let's see. It? This is one point seven seven megabytes. One point eight eight. So I actually reduced file size. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you cleaned it up, maybe. And wow. Cleaned it up a little oh. bit. So let's open them both and see what they look like. So we're going to start with this one. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's the finished product on my screen. It looks a million bucks. Yeah, looks beauty. And here is the one we started with. Bummer. See what see how the see what the difference yeah, is. Yeah, no. no, it's I mean it still looks good. It still looks good, but yeah, but it, it doesn't it's fuzzy. Right. It's fuzzy. It's yeah. dull. It doesn't yeah. it's not lit up. It doesn't have right. life. But this one has it, life. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's showcase right there. Right? And so yeah. this is ready for me. This is ready to post on Instagram and all the other socials. That's so I'm awesome. happy. Oh, hey, Lego cool. Weights and stuff. Hey, Major Stevens. So that's that process. Awesome. awesome. Now, um, if you, if somebody out there is working on an uh, is thinking about making a Lego Ideas project or mm -hmm. has one in in the go on the go and wants to render it and put it up to the site, I'm going to show you mine again. Let me just find it here. I love these masks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything that is not, is in shapes that shouldn't be shapes in Lego. Yeah. These are my Mayan masks. Mm -hmm. This is my Lego Ideas project that is currently on Lego Ideas. I'm going to pull the website up right now. Ooh. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. I gotta, I gotta do my, I gotta do my thing, my, my secret that I gave away, and now I'm a little too self conscious of it every time I do it now because I gave away the secret. Okay. So of what? I, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. So if you go to ideas, type in masks in the search window. It's right now. It's the first one. Click that. Mm -hmm. You get my submission. You get all of my different images of the masks. Hey, Alyssa. Hey, so what's going on? And you get a nice write-up of why they came to be. Now, oh, thanks very much, Carter. I really appreciate that, man. Did you? So the 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 bases right there. Yeah. Those are included as part of the build, right? That's that's correct. That is mine, okay. Alyssa. Yes. Okay. Cool. 
this is my right. Lego Ideas project currently on the website. Yeah. Look at so that I cool. made so I made this stand so that the masks can just hook on. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm sorry if I gave away anything. No, not at all. You did not. It's all <laughs> part and parcel. So <laughs> if, if if for the, for anybody out there that wants to put an ideas up on ideas, the first thing you have to do is start um, like become a member. And then once you've become a member, you, you log into your account. And once you're logged in, you can simply submit an idea. Now, the fun thing about submitting ideas is um, you can read about how it all works. But basically, your idea has to first meet the criteria of the Lego Ideas team. And you can, if you, if you go to the, the site and hit submit idea right here, mm -hmm. it's going to hey, bring James. up it's going to tell you to log in actually. So I, let me just see if I can quickly log in here. I'll have to remember it off by heart here. One second, John. Yeah, we're good. Hi, I'm John. <laughs> I'm John. Uh, that was my name. Uh, I'm back uh, with back to break. That's me. And that's Rick Brickle. You should follow him. He's good. Broken. Let's see if this works. Were you doing like the whole tapping, like <laughs> that meme? <laughs> it sounded like that. <laughs> I was, I was just logging into my, uh, <laughs> <both>. <laughs> I was logging in my, I logged in my profile, but of course it's the wrong profile. So now I've got to log me out oh. and log in and log into my other profile. Don't you love it? <laughs> I, I do love Don't it. It's love fantastic. It. It's so great. Don't you love it? God, you're, you're, you're a rapid typer. <laughs> comes with the territory there we yeah, go so. now i'm in i'm so bad with computers okay so. so once you're logged in go to submit idea mm -hmm. it's going to take you to this screen it shows you the progress that you get as you're moving along okay so mm -hmm. after 12 months if you have 100 supporters after 12 months you get an additional six months if you get to a thousand within that tame time you get an additional six months then you have to get to five thousand and if you get to five thousand well, you have six months to get from 5,000 to, to 10,000, and then you become mm -hmm. a 10,000 club member, and mm -hmm. they review your idea. Right. So before you're even submitted, go to Submit Idea. It's going to bring up this window. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you two options. Is it my, my original idea, or is it IP-based? IP stands right. for intellectual property. So if you were, let's say you wanted to um, submit an idea that was for Transformers. Well, Transformers mm -hmm. is an intellectual property. Uh, that I don't think Lego has in their account right now. So mm -hmm. if you want to know if it's good, just type in Transformers. And as you'll see right there, an X. Mm -hmm. So the X means it's no good. You cannot submit an idea for Transformers. So before right. you're even in the system, before you're mm -hmm. even worrying about which images to, to load up, and even before you start designing an idea, Go mm -hmm. onto the website, do this research first, and it will let you know if it's even worth your time. Right. right. Now, let's say I wanted to do, ah, uh, what's an IP that they might allow? Um, mask. Mask. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting to look it up. <laughs> Looks like you've submitted an IP that, we're evalu that we've not evaluated before. Mask. Let's try, um, let's try. Um, you have to put the periods. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, X, they don't allow oh. it. So it's gone? They will not allow submissions for mask. I'm trying to think of something that they will allow. Um, was, was, didn't you say there was one? Yeah, let's try Care Bears. Oh no. My, my no. Oh, my... They, they allow Care Bears. Look, they allow yeah. Care Bears. <laughs> of course. So if, you, if you've got an idea out there, people, for Care Bears, go for it. Have fun. <laughs> Wait, now I'm crushed about the mask thing. Um, Anyways, once you've, once, yeah, I know it, it does hurt. Once you have, <laughs> once you have figured out that if you, if you are, if you do have an IP-based idea and it passes this first gateway, continue. Right. If you have an original idea, which mine was, you don't have to do any of that. You just hit no, it's my original idea. And you continue. Right. That brings you to this screen. This is the submission screen. So this is where you're going to type in your title. You're going to type in your description. It's basically you're going to add. <laughs> you're going to add some images. Mm. Add some tags. And then when you're done all that, you can preview. 
-hmm. And if you're very happy, you can also save a draft. You can preview. And once you're done previewing, you can submit. Mm -hmm. And once it's submitted, it looks like this. And now once it's submitted, is there, I mean, they have to clear it to go onto the page. Correct. Right? Once it's yeah. submitted, so. you will wait, you'll have to wait three or four days at least mm -hmm. okay. to hear back from Lego and you will either be approved or not approved. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not approved, they usually give you a reason. So for me, believe it or not, they came back saying your images are not clear enough. Hmm. Now this puzzled me because this looks pretty damn clear to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. but their, their I can, system I can is make so, out all the parts. I, I think what it was, was there was a, there's a bit of coloring in the back where the black is. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, but it is like crystal clear. Like you, you right. know, right. so I think their system is just very sensitive to certain colors. And I think because mine is monochrome, plus it had a black background. I think it was doing something with the system. Sure. Sure. Wow. That's wow. That is touchy. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, okay, I can basically make out almost every piece on the front there. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, John, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I've kind of taken you through part designing, uh, rendering, and then a little bit of the ideas platform. So what do you say we do a bit of Q and A? Cool. I'm down for it. I All right. Down for it. Um, thank you so much, by the way. I have now yet even more information to uh, marinate and, yes. and, 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 and to apply to what I'm working on here, which is great because uh, I, I know that I've had to reach out to Adnan a few times uh, in regards to because we, we chatted about a few things uh, on our chats and I was like, oh, hey, what's this? And then now I've, I've gone back to a couple of our chats now, too where you've awesome. gone through and, and I've, I've been able to kind of glean a couple nuggets here and there and apply them to here. And now I have even more. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So no problem. And I appreciate you having me on this great series. It's oh, awesome. thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's, it's been an honor to have you and I really appreciate you being aboard. It's, it's been so much fun. I, I love doing this. It's great. It's, I mean, I, it's weird. Uh, people like you, you get so excited about learning about this. Stuff. And I do. It's really, I am geeky. I love learning about this stuff. It is so exciting to me to learn a little bit more, um, whether I do end up applying it in my tactile builds or digital builds, or whether it's just a bit of knowledge that I get to hang yep. on to and maybe share with some other folks that might be looking for the same bit of knowledge. So um, that's awesome. I'm, I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel very, very fortunate to to be able to 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 pluck from the brains of you folks and uh, and 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 well, basically just rob from you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a question here coming. Oh wait, there was a question, and now it's deleted. Uh, but if you do have any questions, folks, for Rick or for myself, I don't know why you would have that. But uh, <laughs> if you have any questions, please. There's a question bubble down here. I know that sometimes it doesn't look like there's a question bubble down there, but there is. It's um, it can be hidden. You hit the little plus button and out comes something else. And there's a question bubble right there. Um, I don't know how we got that. Um, what's it called? The badge thing on there. And I guess I found out you get it yeah. after a certain amount of followers. You, they, they just throw it on there, I guess, or something. Oh, I, okay. I don't, I don't know. I still don't. I, I, I see it. I, it takes up half my screen when I'm looking at it. Though. I don't um, know how it works. And last night I was uh, talking when we were on with Brett. When I was on with Brett, I was saying, because I had, well, I was the one streaming and I was saying, hey guys, there's a badge option, but somebody said we don't have it. We don't have the option to buy a badge from you. So I don't know how it works or what. I'm going to look into it. Um, nor do I even want, like I said to people, I, I don't need it anyway. It's yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I didn't, I mean, of course it helps for the podcast and all that. Just, I, I, it's not something that we, we, we pander for by any means. No. But I, I know that people are like, well, you're trying to ask us questions to try to get to us to, to donate. And I'm like, no, I just want people to use the question box. I don't care. I don't, if I wanted you to donate, I'd say, hey, go use that thing there. Yes. <laughs> I don't really care. So Brandon's <laughs> asking a great, great question. Is there a tape gun feature on studio? Uh, Brandon, I can say, unfortunately, there is in studio, or at least a tape gun is exclusively for real life builds. <laughs> so John, just to give you some, and I just, just to fill you in on what he's talking about. A long time ago, I was streaming with Emily, Brett, 
and Martin, and mm. uh, we were getting a little silly, and, and we were talking about building techniques, and I decided to grab a tree branch from the garage, and because uh, I had tree branches in the garage, and I used some of these green yeah. leaf pieces, and literally with a tape gun, just taped them to the branch. And I said, hey guys, I've been work I, I got this cool tree mock here, check it out. And I held it up and everybody just lost it. So I was, <laughs> it was a good true time. Tree mock. It's a true tree, tree mock. mock. So hey John, Zach, I what's up? What's up? Hey Zach, I was gonna say, you got any questions for me? Um, let me see, well I do, I do have a, uh, ooh, wow, we got, we got a good, we got a big question here from Lewis coming up. Um, let's see, what's that? Carter knows the story, I guess Carter was there. Rick, Rick Stick. Stick. That, is that is that what it's referred to as now? Yeah, I know that there's a uh, there's the car stick that I listen to the the. the uh, do you ever listen to Barstool Sports? Uh, uh, pardon my take, whatever. <laughs> the car stick, which is just a hockey stick, for your okay. car to get things out of the side of when you drop things down the side of your car. To oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> just a miniature version of a hockey stick, so you get things out when you drop that it. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so, it made me think of that. So, but uh, Lewis actually has a question here. Let me go. My brother. All right. Has a Let's see here. Uh, what is the project you are most proud of, and why? Ooh. You know he's gonna go straight deep. I like it. I like it. Um, Good job, Lewis. And if you're not following that guy, by the way, Lewis and Nutwood. Oh, I'm 100 percent following that guy. Oh, I'm, I mean, I know you were. I know you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. If you aren't following Lewis and Nutwood, I don't even know what you're not. You're, going, you're not following love. Lewis. And there you have it. <laughs> and you should be reading the stuff that he writes with his posts too, because it's brilliant. Yeah. I would say I'm most proud of. Hmm. I guess I could say I'm. I, I'm very proud of the Lego Ideas project for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're simple but effective builds that convey an idea. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing in there that, that Lego would look at and say, we can't ask people to build this. They'll never, it's all basic brick stacking. It's very simple. But I'm proud because I pushed myself with a little bit of help from some friends to actually go through with it. Because at the beginning of last year, I was, think, I was thinking, I don't know if I should and blah, blah, blah. And I just finally got the gumption up to go through with it. So I'm proud of that. But in terms of a, in terms of a build, I would have to say it's the cycle house. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's digital, it's all completely buildable in real life and it will be built. Right. It's the biggest build I've ever tried. Um, and it, it involved a lot of different techniques to get it done. Do you say, is it the base was the, build, the house, the house itself, just the house, not the base. Just the house is over six thousand pieces. The six thousand, then the base is like a two, another two thousand. Okay, yeah. I just couldn't imagine. I can't oh, believe how thanks, big man. the base is. Uh, yeah, that is it is magnificent, and especially when you have the luminous. I can now refer to them as the luminous bricks that you have in there. Yes, <laughs> luminous bricks. I've learned. <laughs> and that one was actually featured. That was the first build I ever had actually featured. Oh, so I guess it wasn't because um. Um, uh oh, what are they called? Oh, Brick Nerd featured my micro builds. Oh, sure. In, in their um, September issue, or one of their September issues, and then um, uh, bits, bits, bits and pieces. I think they're called bits and pieces. They're oh. from um, South America. They featured my Psycho House in their um, sort of monthly magazine. So that was pretty cool. For those of you unfamiliar, <laughs> there's Rick's Psycho House. Sorry for my ring light. No worries. But there's good. that. And then let me, I got to show, oh, it's a, oh, no, it's on the same one. Okay. The Luminous Bricks. Yes. Yeah. So that. We chatted about Luminous Bricks. Yeah. That for me was a serious step in my evolution as a digital mocker. Um, and also physical mocker because it will be built physically eventually. Yeah, I'd like to have it done in time for this Halloween. Uh, oh, that'd yeah, be awesome. that'd yeah. Be so, so cool. I need to get started on sourcing the pieces, but I'd like to have it done. That would be so cool. Um, any thoughts on how many uh, hours of studio before I begin to feel proficient? <laughs> that's, that's from, but that's from uh, that, and I, I gotta, I, I second that.
because uh, I've been using it quite a bit, and that's from Scott Hugh. Um, okay. I've been. Uh, <laughs> hey, Scott. I've I've used it quite a bit, but I certainly don't feel professional. <laughs> so I, I do have an advantage, because I'm a CAD drafter. So I do work in CAD design for as a profession. So I definitely have an advantage with regards to working within that environment, working within mm -hmm. a three dimensional uh, design environment on a computer is my forte. So that helped me uh, accelerate very quickly with studio. Mm -hmm. But you have to know Lego. You can't, right. it's not like everything just falls in place. You have to know mm -hmm. how to design too. So mm -hmm. there's that too. So in terms of the program itself, it's really all down to the individual there. I don't know if I can give a timeline, but I would say start with half an hour to an hour every day. If you mm -hmm. can get into it every day for a half an hour to an hour, just far around in there, try different things, go through the functions watch YouTube videos to learn because that's YouTube is a wonderful free resource. Right. Yeah. And I, I use it all the time. If I have, if I have a question and I don't know, I'm not going to go and take a course, uh, you know, and spend money, just go to YouTube. There's videos out there to help you. And they've helped me a lot. So I would, I would advise that as well. So in terms of getting comfortable down to the person, but I'd say if you've used it for a month, you're going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it really helps in terms of getting to know the, the parts, the elements, um, the different ways that they can work. Um, right. and, and, you know, once you get those connections together, that's when you start to get a little bit more creative. Uh, creative exactly. with those. Um, hi, Melissa and Tumana, um, by hey, the everybody. way. Thanks for, thanks for popping in. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I by no means, I'm the, I'm the guy that expects to be good at the saxophone practices once, <laughs> you know, every two weeks. And then it's like, why am I not good at the saxophone? Yeah. Um, that's how I am with studio. You know, I'll, I'll work on it for a while and, um, and then I'll leave it and then I'll come back and be like, why can't I figure this out? Which is exactly what I'm in the middle of right now because I'm doing these reviews. Um, right. And I think I, for me, I think what, what your bit of advice there is doing a half an hour or whatever hour yep. um, on brick or on studio is, is I think that's something good. That's good to commit to. Um, and I know it's, it's been very frustrating for me because as you know, I haven't, I've been working off of a trackpad and I didn't realize how far, oh. how, how far that, how difficult that makes it uh, to be. I have only, I have all I know. That's why I can sit here and say, Lewis, at least, at least seconded me when he said that, that he always finds random pieces kind of just floating off in midair. Uh, I'm glad that I'm not the only one. I always do. When I zoom out, oh, no. that's yeah. part of my build now. I zoom out just so I can see <laughs> how many what? parts there are floating around. <laughs> studio is currently studio is 100% free. As far as I know. Why do you say current? Well, because as we know, Lego bought Bricklink. And um, you that means that that means by default they now own Brooklyn right. Studio. Of course, but Lego Lego Digital Designer was free. It is, it is, and so. but then they stopped they stopped supporting it. Well, do you think that's because Studio showed up, or is it? I don't. Know? I just don't. I just don't think they saw the value in it. I don't know personally. I really don't know the whole story. I just know that they stopped supporting it, and stu I just got an update for Studio the other day. So yeah, it's here. still getting yeah. support, still getting updates. New pieces are being added. And right. Studio, in my opinion, I shouldn't say this definitively because I haven't spent nearly as much time with LDD mm -hmm. as I have a Studio. But as soon as I, I started with LDD and as soon as I found Studio, I was like, buy LDD. Studio oh, wow. is superior. No kidding. Huh. And the rendering is gorgeous and the, the interface is phenomenal. It's just, it's all good. Wow. Yeah, because I can't even, I, I mean, I can't even get, um, LDD to load on my computer because it's, <laughs> it's such a problem. Like I've tried it on so many different computers and they're just like, nope, sorry, not gonna happen. <laughs> Carter, Carter asks a good question. I'll just show you. He asks if it has minifig parts. The answer oh, is, yeah. The answer is oh, yes, yes, it does. Now, it, everything. it does. Well, almost everything. There is no, definitely everything. stuff that it doesn't have. So I'm gonna go back to master parts here. Master parts. It's going to take a second to load because it's loading the entire library of parts. So I'm in black. I'm in the black color selection. If you go to here, if you go to this box, you can actually select any color in the rainbow. We'll just go to black and we'll type in torso. And hit enter. So what that's going to do is isolate 
every minifigure torso in black color. It's going to take a second here. They got hamsters working the Wi-Fi up there in Canada? You can, you can see it. You can see it <laughs> there. Okay, now, for some reason, it, it didn't. Maybe I'll just type in minifig torso. Let's try that. A one? No, that's not. That can't be possible. There's more than one minifig torso. Come on. Don't mess with me here. There you go. It's only there they are. We know that. There they are. Carter, are you looking? Check this out, dude. Every torso. We've got Batman right there. We've got and, and if you hover over an object, I'll just try it again. It it usually pops up the entire name. So we've got Torso Adventurers Desert Pharaoh breastplate pattern. So it's going to give you a description of what that torso is. That seems excessive. Yeah. On top, on top of that, it's also going to give you a price point. So if I click it. Oh, oh come on now. Come on, man. Okay. So down in this part of the screen right here, you'll actually see this torso, which I selected, which is the Torso Adventure is this guy right here. It's telling me that on Marketplace or wherever you're gonna wherever you're gonna buy it, it is thirty three cents USD. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. it's got torsos, it's got legs, it's got heads, it's got everything you possibly want. Yeah, Carter, you need to get in here, dude. You'll have a lot of fun in here. Carter, here's the problem. Get your uh, uh, you can pop all of it straight into your Bricklink cart too. <laughs> you can. So let's go to yellow. Okay, we're going to go to yellow torsos, yellow torsos. There they all are. Straight from studio, you can go to Berkeley. You can. That's the beauty of it. So now I'm going to just type in head. And now you can see all the minifig heads in yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> just, uh, sorry, everyone. You're ruined for the rest of the night. <laughs> You're not dreaming, Carter. That This program is seriously powerful. And like I just mentioned tonight, they're updating it fairly regularly. So yeah. you're getting new parts from sets that have been released this year, sets that have been released recently. Yeah, It's great. Yeah, it is it is fantastic. And Carter, I do remember when I first found out about it, I didn't realize that it was something, I thought it was certainly something that you had to buy into to like to become a designer or whatever when <laughs> I first learned about it. And, uh, and uh, then I popped around in it and tooled around in it. And man, wow, it is an experience. Definitely, uh, there's learning curves. Definitely learning curves. Just take notes too. Remember that. Take notes. I, I, I I'm a note taker though, as it is. But I will jot down little reminders to myself of things of how I achieve certain things, and right. uh, how to uh, unachieve certain things ah. because I've gotten myself into a couple predicaments with some builds here and there where I'm like, do oh. I have to completely scrap this entire build because I don't know how to undo what I just did? Hmm. So I just had I just had somebody from Germany message me today mm -hmm. and asked me they're they're putting together an aliens exhibit for their this year for November. Awesome. And they want to build my APC and have it on display. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. Very, very cool. Congratulations, yeah. man. That's awesome. Thank it's very, very cool. cool. Very so I'm cool. talking with these guys about it now. And uh Carter and for everybody else listening, including you, John, if you want to take part in this. In the month of February, I'm going to be co-hosting with Kate Brick Huntress, mm -hmm. the Let's Build series. It's going to be it's going to be Let's Build Studio. So awesome. it's going to be di or Let's Build Digital. So it's going to be digital mocks. Oh, oh, so cool! Oh man, that's so great! Yeah. Wow, everyone can take part in that. Everyone in the world, literally anyone who has uh, internet connection and a, and a computer, you and can a computer. take part. That's yep. awesome. That's so cool. Very cool. I'm looking forward to that. I think I'm – oh, Carter, happy birthday there, bud. Look what they hey. did for you. They gave you a whole month Early of birthday gift. <laughs> That's awesome. And you just found out about studio, so there's another birthday gift. Boom. Look Boom. at that. Just piling them up. You, you just were – you were just given every Lego piece for your birthday. There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is there any better gift? Yeah, right? <laughs> um Wow, that's awesome! I'm looking forward to that. I think I might have to. Uh, I might have to partake. I haven't. I haven't done one of the let's builds yet, and uh, so yep. I think I might have to partake. And I have to go back and watch um, the video that was with all of those. I, I, I was there yesterday. Was so chaotic. I wasn't able to 
to stick around for too much. I only saw a couple of the builds, so I would really like to to check out a couple more. I saw Jada's, which was awesome. Um, I thought that was fantastic. So, uh, Studio does mm. not work on iPad, does it? No, no, no. no. The Windows based program. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna need. You're gonna need. Laptops are okay. Uh, desktops are preferred, I imagine, because the the working power of those are a little bit more uh, beefy. It is a beefy. Uh, and beastly program it will take up a lot of uh, space and it might crash quite a bit so be prepared for all of that yeah. um it will crash it will crash eventually um that's just kind of what it does <laughs> it, it, it it you gotta understand how much it's it's processing at one time when you're putting in save it. save save <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's and if you're using a laptop for god's sake listen to john's pain get yourself a mouse do not use a trackpad Unless you're a whiz with trackpads, it's a pain yeah. in the ass. And I'm my. not. I'm not. And I've been doing this for however long <clears> I've <throat> had to this computer and known about uh, working on Studio. So it's been over, you know, it's been a couple of years. And yeah. uh, <laughs> learning all this stuff has just changed my world, seriously. Oh, that's like, awesome. It's like, I, it, don't get me wrong. <coughs> I, I can, I've YouTubed a few things here and there, but it's just, it's on the fly. It's not really focused um and just gleaning a few nuggets uh, of knowledge from yourself from matthias yep. uh, matthias uh matthias <clears throat> i always say his name wrong matthias. <laughs> matthias uh i always said matthias and he never corrected me until the other day right before i was like why don't you guys ever correct me zach didn't correct me about time zones matthias and well, whatever <laughs> so, um, so, so my kid my kids will bring me their laptops with a problem and the first yeah. thing i say is get me a mouse like i'm yeah. not dealing with the yeah. trackpad so terrible they're terrible, they're get terrible. Me a mouse. Yeah. it's yeah. it really i didn't realize that it was that most of the problems were the trackpad and not me until i started asking more and more questions because i was a little too afraid i think because i was like Maybe I just suck at this. Maybe I'm just <laughs> really, because really, I know that I'm not good with computers. I'm not great. I'm not terrible. I'm not my mom per se, but I'm, I'm not great. I'm not highly proficient with computers, but I felt like my learning curve was really steep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then I started asking, and I'm like, I'm not that dumb. I mean, I'm a pretty dumb human being, but I'm not that dumb. <laughs> um, and, and so like I started asking questions and that's kind of why, how, how we ended up here. Um, but I started asking more and more questions to people around the community um, in DMs and whatnot and being like, well, what, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, what's going on here? What's up? Because I couldn't get through any builds. I, I, was, I, I was giving up on projects that I'd started. Um, and then, I, you know, slowly but surely, I started getting some responses and I started making a little bit more progress here and there. And now I'm focused even more so, especially now doing these, these reviews for Back to Brick. Um, and in and, and doing this series, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on studio now than I ever have been. And I've got, I've got a decent collection of bricks, you know, and you do as well. But yeah. um, I think you're really, really able to kind of just sit down and explore your ideas, throw it all out on the proverbial table through studio um, and really get a vibe on uh, getting your proverbial hands over yeah, so that's, every a, that's a great point so uh, i i'm gonna just i'm gonna tangent off that and say when we're talking about both real brick building and studio building so real brick building is awesome they're i would say in my opinion they're equal uh real brick building is awesome because you're forced to work with whatever you have on hand so mm -hmm. it it makes your mind work in ways where you're not as free so you come mm -hmm. up with different ways of connecting things and you can look at a part and say, well, this part is intended for this, but it also kind of looks like this. So I right. can make it look like that. So that's really cool. Right. But what I find hurts me is that I don't, I, I have bins, I have organization bins and everything. And I'm somewhat organized, but I'm not organized to the point where I can just find a brick. Like, right. just, oh, I know where that is. It's right over here. <laughs> so especially really unique bricks. So what frustrates me is that when I'm trying to build and I, and I want to do it quickly, I'm spending half of my time finding the pieces, which kind of hurts. So yeah. studio allows you to find the piece in an instant sure, yep. and also find pieces you don't have. So if you have a vision, like for instance, the Bates hotel, Bates mm -hmm. mansion rather mm -hmm. would, that would never have come to be in any way, shape or form. If I had tried to do it physically, cause I just don't have that many roof slopes. I don't have that many t uh, plates. I don't have, 
half the parts I need to build the thing. So, right. but I wanted my vision to become real, like something. So I, mm -hmm. I went to studio and my vision came to life. Mm -hmm. So it, it helped me realize what I was wanting to get out from an artistic standpoint. So there's right. pros and cons to both. And that's sure. why I work in both. Yep. Yeah. And same here. I, and, and, and I'm now becoming, uh, I, I'm certainly more of a tactile builder, of course. Um, but uh, I'm definitely uh, gravitating more towards digital uh, because uh, I just, I see the benefit of it. And I see, as you said, as you listed off all of the, 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 the reasons why it is a good thing. Uh, and, and of course it has its drawbacks, you know, and the, you, I can't get frustrated. I, there are times that I want, Hey Brent, how's it going? Hey Brent. <laughs> it was only what, how many hours ago? <laughs> um, but uh, I, um, <clears throat> there are times when I want to throw the computer through the screen, you know, and <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so uh, utterly frustrated, but then I realized, okay, take a step back, maybe even go play around with some bricks just to kind of yes. get the, you know, to, to get that vibe going back again and then come back to the computer later on. Um, and it's, and it's worked. It's worked. I mean, I keep coming back to it. That, that says something for me to be able yeah. to come, keep coming back to the program. Hey buddy. Uh, hey, thank Brent. you so much again, by the way, Brent. That was awesome. <laughs> had such a fun time this morning. Uh, I geeked out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just literally, you can, you can type in a parts number. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, a little tired. <laughs> a little, a little punch drunk. Yeah, still got the coffee going. <laughs> still got the coffee going. Um, but you can literally um, type in, a number part or uh yep. you can do you can just start like by one by two one by two two by four um slope uh you, whatever you think it might like say windshield type in windshield and it kind of gets you over to that kind of roundabout area you know yeah which is great and hey funny taco bunny studio is also really good at, at at showing you telling you when things don't work mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. if if your pieces are colliding the pieces will turn transparent like the whole build will turn and it will show you where the pieces are actually colliding which is good mm -hmm. if they don't work from a clutch power perspective so if the um integrity of the build isn't good you can hit um uh what's the word is it collision is that what you're no about? not collision hold on it's right there it's right here uh stability stability, stability. <laughs> yeah i just gave it right <laughs> yeah you can hit yeah. stability and it, it will show you the parts that that studio considers to be unstable that being right. said i've put official lego sets in studio built mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you hit stability and there are problems so really yeah so mm -hmm. it's not that smart sure. yeah <laughs> it's smart but not right that smart. now have you have you checked to see what what has kind of come up as a set that says there's a stability issue and checked it out yourself to see why it may or may not or is it just because it's not the the, the, the transference of the information is not it was, as it was, clear as it would be. It, oh. was the, it was the blue Mustang. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, Mike the creator blue Mustang. Yeah, the gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous Mustang. Yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah, oh. mine too. I, I don't own it, but I want to. It's beautiful. Uh, he, yeah. Uh, Brent said he really uses the stability thing, which he makes – I mean, if he – he was showing off one of his uh, – one of his Batmo – I think it was Batmobile. Yeah, no, it was the Ghostbusters. Uh, he was talking about the, the, the Ecto-1 that he updated and it has some flex to it. I imagine that uh, there might be some stability issues on that if he were to run it through there. But the Mike Seiki, I was, uh, we were talking about him earlier today as well because of oh, the cool. Ecto one. And um, his door hinges, I imagine, man, I, it seems like there might be some craziness that might go on with his door hinges, the way that he builds those. Yeah. And um, I'm like Brent, I don't, I, I, I think I've, I've, I really rarely use stability for anything. Unless I'm completely, I just want to see, I'm just curious. Let's see if it's, if it's stable or not. But then mm -hmm. I know it's still going to be good. Like the right. APC had all kinds of instability issues. It's fine. It's, right. It's, it's totally just, fine. So it's just, yeah. it's a, it's a quirk. No. Studio, studio works in absolutes, I think. And, it, and if you're not hitting that absolute, it's just giving you a warning. So. I, I guess I just, I'm sure there's, there's beneficial reasons to having that. I mean, I oh, guess if, you're, if you're being, if you're, if you're being a more, uh, straightforward builder, I guess you really want to have that. And so, of course, if you're having a structural uh, build, uh, say like Deep Shen, I imagine who uh, you know is yeah. building all of those towers, those skyscrapers and whatnot. I imagine you're using stability quite a bit for that. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's a good uh, another thing to be to be considerate of when you're building in studio is you have to understand gravity in the real world. Yeah, <laughs> how it will apply to what yeah. you're building. So if you want to build 
if you start at the bottom and just start building out at an angle and think, oh, it's a great mock, I'm going to leave, it's not going to work. It's just, yeah, it's going to fall right. over. You know? yeah. so you <laughs> Gravity to... still exists. Hey, uh, hey, Jada. Hey, Jada. Hey, Is she, she talking said, to hey, you or me? Man. She's she a talk... young man. So it's got to be Ray. Got to be, because I think I am younger than you. <laughs> if only by just a couple of months. I know. <laughs> man, it's the gray hair. It's just the gray hair. It's yeah. Never... Um, Awesome. Uh, does anyone have us have any questions? Right, because we're gonna uh, probably. I mean, unless you would you have more young men? She's like, yeah, you know, it's a couple young of men. Hi, Jay. Yeah. Um, do you uh, do you have uh, more uh, more nuggets you'd like to throw our way, sir? And if anyone has any more questions, otherwise, uh, oh wow, geez, I didn't realize it was twenty after seven. <laughs> we went. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that everybody here watching is already into Lego in some way, shape, or form. But sure. if you haven't tried mocking, um, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Even if you just take a set that you have, like an official set, like this, for instance, take this car. This is yeah. a nice little, I think it's a, a Ferrari, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's a Ferrari. Yeah. Just take just take this and change it up a little bit. Make yeah. it into something that, that you make it into something that you come up with. That's and nice. and you'll find that it's it's addictive. And, and once you've done it and it's fun, keep doing it. And, you know, it's it's a good way to, to challenge your mind and kind of get you out of just building sets yeah, but just building sets is totally fine right if you don't want to try mocking totally yeah. fine absolutely i mean we also i think i think everyone starts with the with the with the sets and you know you yeah. either stick with doing the sets and that's yep. perfectly fine perfectly I think, fine i love building sets and i still buy all of the sets that i want to get but i also still toy around you know we there's so many of those pieces that you have that are extra left over from the sets if you buy in those sets you're bound to, you're bound to be able to have enough after a couple builds, or even if you go buy those 1500 piece brick boxes, you know, and uh, tool yeah. around with those, the different colors. Here, here's here's stuff. my extra yeah. pieces. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have bins full of that that I have to store that I'm not touching. <laughs> the worst thing about the extra pieces is they're usually very, very small. So you can't, yes. even, you can build mosaics with them. They're great for mosaics. Yeah. I love the printed pieces that they always leave. <laughs> Those are my favorites. <laughs> yeah, so Jada, Jada is saying that the uh, challenge that I'm doing with Rick is going to be hard. If you don't use Studio, it will be. Yeah. But it's a great well, chance the, to get start using Studio. And and what's the word you use there? Challenge, I believe, was the word. Yeah. So challenge. that would be the operative word to challenge yourself to learn something new. Um, and Absolutely. I think, you know, that's what Lego is really about is you end up challenging yourself. Uh, yep. for you know whether you're starting with the four plus sets you end up going to the six sets you go to the eight the nine the 16s whatever 18 plus uh creator experts so on and so forth you're challenging yourself um and i think and if you step out of that and start using it digitally or if you start building yourself your mocks you don't have it doesn't have to be something that you're like okay i'm gonna throw, post this and blaze it all over yeah. social media whatever yeah. build it for yourself Absolutely. build something for yourself prove something to yourself that, you know, that is exactly how I got started. I yeah. built that Ark of the Covenant for myself. Yeah. I built the APC for myself because yeah. I love those two movies. They're, they're two of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. And I wanted to recreate something from that movie in physical bricks because I had mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And I did it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to share this with people to see what they think. Mm -hmm. And that started me down this, this road of... <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, <clears throat> most, people, and most people will. And, and her, her Pepper Potts, man, she really... Knock that pepper pots out of the park, Jada did. Um, that was her first. Uh, oh time yeah, doing that. Yeah. So, I mean, she nailed that. And then, like, if you're if you're finding yourself, you know, not not totally inspired to with the pieces that you have or whatever, a try to forget the color of the pieces that you have in front of you because you can you can make them any color. You're worried more about the shapes at that point than anything. And yeah. b if you're if you're lacking inspiration always go to something that you're comfortable with. Do you have a favorite baseball team? Do you have a favorite yeah. magazine? Do you have a favorite movie? S build something from those things. Glean from something that's close to you. Do you want to build your dog? Exactly. Do you want, you want to build a tree that you, you hang out by under? Whatever. Um, glean from something that, that, that touches you on a, on, a, on, a, on a molecular level, you know? And you'll put more into that than you think you will. Yep. Yeah. So. Stuff. Anyways. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you so much. I, I thank you. This has been four great episodes. We've learned a lot from you. I guarantee you I will be going back and, and, and checking out the previous episodes to, to, awesome. to go Thanks, over. Andrew. You do too, uh, buddy. 
Uh, oh, is that Brick and Brood? Yeah, Brick, Brick and Brood, thank you so much for, for hanging out and coming into Thanks, all Jay. the episodes. It's been great. And uh, and thank you to everyone who's who's been showing up to uh, to Rick's episodes. He's been knocking them out of the park. He showed us both the tactile and digital builds. Um, his, Of course, his Lego uh, Ideas Project. And if you're not following Rick Brickham right now, well, we can't do much else for you. We can't. We can't <laughs> hold your hand through life, your kid. <laughs> the, uh, the, so. the the door and fireplace mocks came apart today. They're gone. Oh no, kidding! Do you have plans for them? Uh, no, the parts just all went back into the bins. Good night, mom. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Right on. Well, I'll be interested to see what you got coming up next, sir. I'm really thanks, John. Uh, and listen, I'm... thank yes. you for having me on this fantastic series. It's great yeah. what you're doing. Oh, thank uh, you. You've got an amazing lineup of people going on in this oh. thing. And I, I'm looking forward to seasons three and four. Oh. Um, it's, it's fantastic. You're an inspiration, truly. Thank um, you so much. I, you, I know how much hard work it is. And you, I see your posts daily. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Great way of bringing the community together. And oh. yeah, honored oh. to be a part of it. Thank you so much. I, I'm, uh, thank you. I, oh. <laughs> you got me all misty. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that, Rick. That means a lot to me. Really You're welcome, dude. Thank you. All right. Have a great evening. I will talk to you here in two minutes, I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Have a great night, buddy. Thank Ciao, you so buddy. much. All right. Well, there we are, folks. We, we, we've done Rick for, for Series 2. Rick's a wrap. Rick's a wrap. Oh, I got chills. I got chills. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Rick. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of Rick, and I'm also a big fan of his Lego ability. Um, you notice how there's a big fan of Rick? big fan of his leg wing abilities so um he's a good human he's a good builder and i'm um, i'm proud to know him and i'm honored to to call him a friend so thank you so much for being a part of this rick it's been great i've learned a ton from you and i'm sure that i will continue to learn a ton from you regardless of whether we're doing this series or not so um that's awesome I, i'm really really very touched so thank you hey lewis thanks so much that was very kind of you to say and um uh i i'm i <laughs> i find it um, interesting whenever people are uh, into these stupid, crazy ideas that I come up with, with uh, naming things like <laughs> don't set the Lego technique and uh, doing that. I did stuff like this in the music industry and people looked at me weird. And I, when I started this out, people looked at me a little weird. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, and uh, now here we are. We're what, 40 some odd episodes into uh, Don't Sweat the Lego Technique and uh, series, series four or is, is booked. Series three is booked. Um, and uh, we're on the last week of uh, series two. So this is awesome. I'm really stoked. We're going to continue on with Adna tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific. 11 Eastern. We're going to do more studio building. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everyone, who has uh, tuned in to these episodes. They're great. Um, I, I, I don't say they're great because I, I, they're great because I'm fortunate to, to have these, um, these brilliant builders to, to, to pluck information from, to, to ask the questions that a lot of us have that maybe um, – where we don't maybe have the gumption to ask or uh, know how or whatever um, uh, shy what happened uh, I'm the guy the Chicago uh, Detroit kid that just <laughs> is the one that says who cares I want to I want to know <laughs> and so that's why we're here <laughs> uh, and I've just I'm, I'm over the moon happy so thank you uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, chatting with that not tomorrow uh, he's actually got a really big surprise for me. Um, he uh, picked, so we're, we're going to build an album cover tomorrow. I don't know which one it is, but he broke, uh, he broke it on the last episode, which band it's going to be. And we're going to build a Black Flag album tomorrow because Black Flag happens to be one of my favorite bands of all time. And he said, we're going to build it tomorrow. So, <sighs> Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so, so much once again for tuning into Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. I am John with Back to Brick. Make sure you're tuned into the podcast with Garrett. He's doing a great job. He's got Brick Sheepa in there right now. I just did that Rancor. It's so awesome. Uh, the Rancor Pit and uh, with Cody. It looks so good. Um, go check it out. Listen to the podcast. Download, subscribe. He's doing a great job. We got a bunch more in the works. And tomorrow, we got Adnan. So until, bye, Zach. Thank you for hanging out, buddy. 
he was in series one and that was a lot of fun uh <laughs> until uh tomorrow 8 a.m pacific 11 eastern you uh don't sweat that leg workout nico okay bye-bye